Welcome to my channel, Fiscal Voyage. I'm Felix. So I'm putting a series together of uh, videos of covering of different dividend aristocrats. These are companies that have been growing dividends for 25 consecutive years. And if this is the first time visiting the channel, make sure to subscribe uh, so you get notified with uh, tomorrow's video of the next dividend aristocrat. So in this video, we're going to talk about Archer's Daniel Midland, uh, ticker symbol ABM. This particular company has been growing dividends for 45 consecutive years. So make sure to watch the whole video because towards the end of the video, I'm going to provide you with a fair value price and give you my recommendation if either is a buy, hold, or sell at current prices. So let's get started with the stock analysis. Okay, Archer Daniels Midland Company, ticker symbol ADM, is American Global Food Processing and Commodities Trading Corporation headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. The company operates more than 270 plants and 420 corp procurement facilities worldwide where cereal grains and oil seeds are processed in products such as food, beverages, animal feed markets around the world. Okay, so if we look at the fundamentals, it's not actually that great. Uh, revenue only grew or was flat 0.5% for the 10-year period. Net income was negative 3.7% in that past 10 years as well. The company has a good credit rating of A, which is investment grade. Uh, in that same 10-year period, operating income was only uh, negative 4.3% compounded annually. And earnings didn't grow at all as well, flat, negative 1.5%. So over the 10 years, uh, the company has been basically uh, flat in you know revenue, net income, uh, earnings. And even the past five year average has kind of been the same. Uh, past five year revenue has only a negative 1.1% growth and net income at negative 7.1%. So fundamentals so far is not looking too good. Let's continue with the second portion. Uh, for 2019, the company earned $2.63, uh, net margin at 2.1%, which is uh, compressed versus 2018 of $2 or 2.8%. Um, this company has very low net margin. Uh, if you look at the history, it's been around 2, 3, or 4%, so that's very uh, tight. Return on equity is, was the same, 7.2%, uh, but it's been consistent uh, for the past you know, five years. Currently, however, the company does have a nice attractive yield of 3.66%. And with a five-year growth rate of 7.8%, but I'm I'm seeing this growth rate slowing down tremendously. For example, earlier this year, the company only increased the dividends by 2.9% in January, and I, I see that as a trend because analysts are expecting uh, lower earnings growth. Uh, I'll just show you that later. Um, however, the dividend is safe at 50% to earnings uh, for 2020 expected earnings. And they've been growing dividends for 45 consecutive years, which is outstanding. Um, that's tremendous growth of dividends there for 45 years. But like I said, I'm, I'm seeing the dividend growth slowing down to the 3% range. The charter rule comes in at 11.5, but which is the uh, five-year growth rate plus the current yield. But I'm seeing this going to uh, drop as the growth rate decreases with time. And the five-year year dividend yield average is 2.99%, which is uh, 3% basically. And at current yield, 3.66, it's not too much of a big difference. So that's a pretty good indicator that may be fairly valued. We'll continue with that and see. Uh, the balance sheet does look good, however. Uh, debt to capital only 28%. The current ratio of 1.5, that's where you like to see it, 1.5 or higher, uh, which is the current asset divided by current liabilities. And the debt to equity ratio is uh, good at 0 0.67, and the book to the price to book ratio at 1.15, which is better than their five-year average of 1.33. So overall, the balance sheet looks solid. I like this. So future outlook: analysts expect 2020 to have earnings of $2.84, which is an increase of 2019 of $2.63, so that's a positive there. While everyone is uh, earnings, uh, every company's, um, for the most part, earnings has been dropping for this year, uh, uh, ADM is expected to earn more. And of course, that's because it's a, it's a food company, they grow food, 
So obviously we still need to eat, right? So that's why earnings are expected to be higher. And same thing for 2021 at $3.29. Our CFRA has a projected earning growth of only 1%, which is something uh, you know worrisome here. And my dividend discount, my dividend zero return model will come in at 7.8%. So that's a very low base of my criteria of 9% or higher. Um, so that's something to consider there. And the forward PE is only 13.6 compared to the current PE of 14.5. So that's a plus because earnings for 2020 is expected to be higher than the 2019 earnings. Uh, however, as you can see, the five-year average is 15.7. So based on this, it may be undervalued based on the PE of performance ratio. Okay, so if we look at the fast graph, uh, the black line again is the monthly closing price. The orange is a earnings with a PE multiple of 15, and the blue is a normal PE of 16. Um, as you can see, first off, the earnings has been um, fluctuating up and down as high as uh, $3.50 in 2018, uh, $3.20 in 2014, and it's gotten as low as $2.13 in 2017. So as you can see, it fluctuates a lot. Um, I personally think this company should be worth around 11 or 10 PE um, for me to consider, consider it, and I'll show you later. Um, but if it goes to the earnings multiple of 15, there is an expected return of 31%, um, which is includes the dividends for 2021. So that's, you know, you could make money here at, at current prices, but I think there's a lot of more attractive option out there than this one here. Uh, again, we'll talk about that shortly. Um, the blended adjusted earnings at 6.9, which is attractive. I like to see it's 6, 7%. So that's kind of right at there. And as you can see, the S&P credit rating of A, which is good. And one thing to note as well is that analysts has been pretty not correct with uh, earnings estimates. Uh, they have a, a negative uh, 60, 50% uh, a correctness rate, if you will. Um, so they've been wrong most of the time where they miss uh, the actual company's earnings. So um, I really don't trust this, the earnings, expected earnings too much. It's just something to, to see, but uh, just an FYI. So we go to the fair value price here. CFRA has a fair price of $41.94, Morningstar at 45 Fast Graph is $42.52, and the Yahoo at $46.75. My dividend discount model analysis came in at $24.72. This low um, price point for the dividend discount model analysis is low because I have a projected 3% uh, dividend growth for the next three years as they just increased it by 2.9% this year in January. I don't see that growing you know six percent seven percent or eight percent uh anytime soon but you know three percent maybe four percent is is pretty safe but I, I like to be conservative here so i use a three percent for the next three years and three percent after that with a discount rate of nine percent so that's how we came out with twenty four dollars and seventy two cents so averaging out to five we get a fair price of forty dollars and nineteen cents and currently the company goes for thirty eight dollars and seventy four cents therefore the company is only slightly undervalued or fairly valued by 3.7%. Therefore, my recommendation for uh, ADM is currently as a hold. So I have a hold recommendation for ADM. A few things that I don't like is the, uh, the revenue growth or lack of, and same thing with net income for the past 10 years and five years, this can have been kind of flat or even negative. I actually own shares of this company and I'm in the positive but I wouldn't be buying it at today's prices. It would have to drop by 10% or 15% at current prices before I even consider buying shares. The main reason for that is because of the future expected earnings growth is uh, around uh, two to three percent. The dividend growth rate is very low at what I'm expecting, 3%, maybe even 4% for the next uh, few years. So for me to even consider buying it, I, I would like to see it at a 15% uh, discount therefore I will get a better uh, current yield maybe around 4% 4.25% uh, uh, yield then I find that a little bit more attractive but uh, the company is real good it has a great balance sheet the current ratio of 1.5 is good and the fact that it's a food company 
uh, it produces food so I, I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon so I expect the dividends to continue to grow it's just not the rate that I would like and the dividend yield is not uh, a yield that I, I would like for that low uh, dividend growth so that's why I'm giving it a hold rec recommendation uh, put in your watch list I think is a great long-term company just not at current prices so if you like this video make sure to uh, hit the like button and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel uh, for tomorrow's video so best and I'll see you guys in the next video